Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today we are back with round two of intoxicating perfumes in my collection. I've got a whole bunch more, and I'm gonna jump right in. So the first one, this is a Montal fragrance, and mine is a tester bottle. Um, my tester bottle has definitely seen better days, but I don't care because the liquid inside of it is still amazing. Um, this is Montel Rose Elixir. So I don't know if this has been reformulated or if it was just renamed, but you will find when you um, when you go to look for this perfume, you will find that there is this one, Rose Elixir, and now there's another one called Rose's Elixir. I don't know if it's the same fragrance, it's just been renamed. Um, I'm not totally sure, maybe one of you know and can let me know, um, but this is specifically Rose Elixir and I love this fragrance. It's a beautiful, warm, clean, sweet, really modern, fresh rose fragrance. I adore it. It reminds me of, it's always reminded me of a version of a Christian Dior fragrance or if you mixed Miss Dior Cherie, like the 2012 formulation, and like Miss Dior Absolutely Blooming. It's something like that, but it doesn't have any patchouli in it, if I remember correctly. I don't think it's got any patchouli in it, but it's this beautiful, sweet, I don't wanna say soapy, because it's not soapy, but it's got this warm, this really sweet, almost a warm kind of clean laundry scent to it. It is truly intoxicating. I've got a few intoxicating florals in my collection, but this one, there's just something about this. I think there's, it's got something to do with the warm, the almost kind of warm cotton scent that you get paired with the really sweet, like intensely sweet floral. It's stunning. It's an absolute monster of a fragrance. This thing is nuclear. You can spray it on one time and you are good for the entire day. Um, this one, to me, this is signature scent worthy. I could absolutely see this being a stunning signature scent. This is one that I would never get sick of. I could spray this on every single day and I would be happy to smell this every single day. Um, it's just, it's an amazing scent. I Montel scents can be hit or miss for me and I also think that a ton of them smell very, very similar. Montel and Mansara, a lot of their fragrances have the same base and they just tinker with the notes a little bit, but they all end up smelling very, very similar. It's not like the most unique smelling thing in the whole world. I really haven't smelled anything else that smells exactly like it. There are definitely things on the market that, you know, are, that smell kind of like it, but I don't know. This is, it's special and it's very intoxicating smelling and I love it. So anyways, that is Montel Rose Elixir. This next one, I have not talked about this fragrance in so long, I haven't even worn it in, pfft, I don't even know. I probably haven't worn this fragrance in like three years. It's one that I could never get rid of, but I have to really be in the mood to wear this. But this is an incredibly toxic, intoxicating fragrance. Um, this is Angel Muse from Mugler. It smells like angel, but add like a little bit of a nuttiness to it. It's like a sweet, slightly nutty, syrupy form of angel. It's not quite as dark as Angel, like the original Angel. It's a little bit more syrupy smelling. It's sweeter. It still has that beautiful, beautiful patchouli in the base though that still kind of grounds it. I think it needs that patchouli to ground it. If it didn't have that grounding patchouli in it, I think it would be way too sweet and just too over the top, but I do love this one. But again, I do have to really be in the mood for this. Um, and this is best in very cold weather. It's heavy. It's a very heavy fragrance. It's sad because you used to be able to find these stunning Mugler fragrance, fragrances in TJ Maxx. I think that's where I found mine for like $25. It's been years and years ago now, but you just can't find good fragrances like this in TJ Maxx anymore. At least not mine. Mine is just full of bottles that don't even have boxes because they're like generic perfumes. They're like, you know, and they're $12.99. They're not any, they're all clones of really popular perfumes that I have no interest in. And it's really sad because I used to be able to find amazing gems at my TJ Maxx like this. And those days are long gone. It's a bunch of Burberry, which is great if you don't have Burberry, but I've got most Burberrys. Um, and a bunch of bottles that aren't even in boxes because they're just like off-brand clones. 
such a sad state of affairs at my TJ Maxx's. But anyways, that is Angel Muse, absolutely intoxicating fragrance. Most of Mugler fragrances, in my opinion, are intoxicating perfumes. Alien is intoxicating. The Angel, the whole Angel line, very intoxicating. I mean, I just, I love them. They're amazing, and this one is no different. So anyways, that is Mugler Angel Muse. Okay, next, this is an old signature of mine. I've talked about this a ton on my channel, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but Stella, just the original Stella EDP. Even this not very good reformulated version has become very difficult to find and is has become incredibly expensive. Um, so I am glad that I almost decluttered this because I bought, um, I spent like $183 on a bottle of Rose Absolute that I found on eBay. And after I bought that, I was like, well, I don't need this version anymore because it's a reformulation. It's not even very good anymore. Um, and I almost decluttered it. I'm so glad I didn't because yes, it's a watered down version of Stella, but it's still Stella and it's very hard to find anything that smells like this. There are a lot of perfumes out there that a lot of people say smells like, smells like this, but they don't. Um, I don't know if it's just me and I'm just fussy because this is one of my favorite perfumes of all time and because it's an old signature of mine and I went through like three bottles of the original formulation. So I'm very fussy about what people say this smells like. Um, and I get asked all the time, like what smells like the original Stella and honestly nothing. I've never really found another perfume on the market that smells just like this, that I would comfortably be able to say, yes, go buy this perfume, it smells exactly like Stella. Like, I'm just not comfortable saying that about anything. The closest thing I've ever found, a beautiful subscriber from England sent me a sample um, of a fragrance from Miller Harris called Rose, I think it's called Rose Silences, and that is the closest it still isn't exact. It doesn't smell exactly like Stella, but that is the closest thing I've ever found to smelling like Stella. I believe they've got it on Fragrance Nut right now too. But yeah, Stella is just beautiful. There's something about the rose oil that they use in this one and the amber in the base There's and the peony. There's something about the combination of this fragrance that is just unlike any other rose on the market and really just unlike any other perfume on the market. I mean, people have even compared um, the Kim Kardashian one. I can't even remember. It's the beautiful one that comes in the white rose bottle. I've got it. I don't know why I can't remember the name of it, but the, people have even compared that to Stella and that is not even in the same orbit, like not even in the same universe as Stella but people will just willy-nilly compare things to it and it's like, no, no. I must just have a sensitive nose or I'm just fussy about it, but I am, I am fussy when it comes to my Stella <laughs> because I want, if I ever say that something smells like this, you can rest, rest assured that it does smell like this because I will never tell you that something smells like this because I haven't found anything yet. So anyways, that is Stella. It is an, this will always be an absolutely intoxicating fragrance to me because it is incredible. It is, in my opinion, the best rose fragrance that has ever been made to date. Now, don't get me wrong, I haven't smelled every rose fragrance on the market, but at one time I had like 40 rose perfumes in my collection because I was on this like rose, I was on a rose kick for like two years. So I have smelled a lot of rose perfumes. And in my opinion, there is nothing that smells as good as the original Stella. This is, I mean, it's just, it's perfection. It's a masterpiece. So anyways, that's Stella from Stella McCartney. This next one, this is another one that to me is absolutely intoxicating. It's one of the most intoxicating vanillas, in my opinion. It is an old signature of mine as well, so that probably has something to do with it. But this is Pure Vanilla from La Vanilla. I love this. Um, I think the reason I love this so much is because it is a vanilla fragrance, but it's a very complex vanilla. There's a lot more going on in this than just vanilla, but vanilla is at the heart of it. It is the most prominent note in it and all of the other notes that are in it just really support the vanilla in the most beautiful way. 
I love it because it's perfumey, it's not gourmand, it's, which don't get me wrong, I love a gourmand vanilla. But I love this because it's perfumey. It's not in any way juvenile. You're not gonna smell like a walking cupcake with this. This is a vanilla that you can that you can wear and still feel like a grown woman. Not feel like you're walking around smelling like a dessert because it is sweet and inviting and yummy and vanillic, but it's perfumey and grown up. I love it. It's an absolutely intoxicating vanilla. Most vanilla fragrances for me are intoxicating because I adore vanilla. It's one of my favorite notes, but there's something just really special about this. And this one is nuclear. You can spray this on. This is a vanilla that you can spray on and is actually gonna last. Um, it's You're gonna get a good eight hours out of this easily, probably longer. Um, it's just an amazing vanilla fragrance. I love it. So anyways, that is La Vanilla Pure Vanilla. Next, <laughs> this is a fragrance that I haven't worn this in a really long time either, and I don't even know why. It's, I think because this one has gotten kind of shoved back in the back of my hutch, and I forget that I even have it, but I adore this perfume, and this is intoxicating. Not only is this intoxicating for me, but this is always intoxicating to everybody around me. Um, this is one of my most complimented fragrances. People used to, when I worked around people, they used to just go crazy for this perfume. It's so good. This is Ely Saab, Girl of Now. And gosh, this is orange blossom and pistachio. It's beautiful. It's sweet, it's floral without being too floral. It's got a little bit of nuttiness in it. It's very, very syrupy and very sweet. I adore this perfume. I think it's stunning. There are fragrances on the market that smell like this, but there's really nothing like the real thing. It does smell very, very similar to Violet Blossom from Zara. Um, no lie, somebody asked me to compare them one time and I, Violet Blossom is probably my favorite fragrance from Zara. And I've had it and Girl of Now in my collection for years and years and I have never made the connection, but they smell identical, like almost exactly. Like when you spray them on the skin and they dry down, they smell exactly alike. So you can get Violet Blossom from Zara. You're not gonna get the longevity though or the quality that you'll get out of Girl of Now. Um, this will, this is nuclear. This will last eight, 10, 12 hours. This is a fragrance that you're gonna spray on one time and you're gonna smell like this all day and you will never have to reapply it and it will probably hang around until you wash it off. Um, I love it, it's beautiful. This is for my sweet gourmand syrupy lovers out there. I think you would love it. So it's an intoxicating perfume, not only for the wearer, but for everybody around the wearer as well. So anyways, that is Ely Saab, Girl of Now. Next, this is not gonna be any surprise to anybody. I almost didn't include this one because I talk about this perfume so much because I am obsessed with it, but I couldn't leave it out because, I mean, it is me, it's my channel, and I have to be true to who I am. So anyways, we're gonna talk about YSL Libre Intense. I have every version of Libre. I love every single version of it. They're all beautiful. They're all, it's, they all stay very true to Libre. They all smell very much like Libre. There's something about the intense version though that is just amazing. Uh, it's sweet, it's syrupy, it's honeyed smelling. It's jasmine and orange blossom and vanilla. I think it's got some tonka bean in it. Um, it's perfection, it's a masterpiece. This, to me, is the best designer fragrance that has been released probably in the last 15 years. The best. I love it. I usually am not, don't get excited about new releases coming out of any of the de designer houses because at this point they're just recycling, you know, most of them are doing some version of a recycled tuberose fragrance and it's old and I'm over it. A lot of them are putting out just sugar water smelling trash that is not interesting in any way that again is just recycled fragrances and so I'm over it. Libre, however, is like a beacon of hope for designer perfumes. It's an absolute beast. I wear this one to bed a lot. I forgot to say it's got lavender in it too. Lavender, orange blossom, um, vanilla, tonka bean. It's amazing. 
It's an absolute beast. You can spray this on one time. You're gonna be good for the entire day. I will wear this any time of year. I will wear this all four seasons, morning, noon, and night. It does not matter. I will wear this perfume anytime. It's a comfort fragrance for me and it is absolutely intoxicating in every form that it comes in. I love it, but the intense version is, to me, is the best. So anyways, yeah, I don't wanna talk about this one too much because I talk about it all of the time because I'm obsessed with it, but that is why I sell Libre Intense. Okay, next we have a Michael Kors fragrance, and there are not very many Michael Kors fragrances on the market that I love, um, I like a lot of them. I think a lot of them are just fine. I haven't smelled a whole ton of them, to be completely honest, but a lot of them are just sweet florals, and they're great, they're fine. This one, however, is different. This is Michael Kors Sexy Amber, and this is a powdery, like a powdery, almondy amber, and it's beautiful. It's sweet, there's something kind of skin-like about it, there's something a little bit primal smelling about it. It's powdery, a little bit nutty. I don't hear this perfume talked about often. This is another one. I don't necessarily have to be in the mood to wear this. I can wear it anytime because I love it, but there's something about this that almost smells... I have to have the confidence to wear this. That's really what it boils down to. I wouldn't be able to wear this on just any day. I would have to be feeling really, really confident that day in myself to be able to wear this around other people, which is weird because there are very, very few perfumes that make me feel like that, but this is one of them. There, it, I, It's very hard for me to explain. It's almost like you feel kind of like you have to look like a supermodel in order to pull off something like this. And it's silly, that's so dumb. But something in my head, there's something that makes me feel like that about this perfume. But I love it, it's stunning. It really is a very beautiful, sexy amber. That's the perfect name for it. That's, I mean, that's the name of it and it's a perfect name for it because that's really what it's like. I love it though. I hardly ever hear anybody talk about this perfume and I don't know, there's just something amazing about it. It's absolutely intoxicating smelling. Um, I don't know if it'd be intoxicating for other people, but it's absolutely intoxicating for me. So anyways, that is Michael Kors Sexy Amber. It's a beast, it's nuclear. You can put on one spray of this and you're gonna smell like this for eight or 10 hours plus, probably until you wash it off. Um, it's amazing. So anyways, that is Michael Kors Sexy Amber. Okay, next we have one from Genre Parfums and there are so many from Genre that I could talk about. Um, the newer one called Mellow Vanillo, that one is very intoxicating to me. I'm waiting, I'm like waiting for the hype to die down around that one so I can buy a full bottle of it because I think it keeps like selling out. But anyways, this one my beautiful friend sent to me. This is Genre Parfums and it's called Plum Dumb. And this one will always kind of remind me of Christmas because I think it was around Christmas that she sent it. And this is a very intoxicating perfume. This one is sweet and warm and syrupy. It smells a little bit spicy. It smells warm and spicy. It smells a little bit boozy. It's gorgeous. It's syrupy. It definitely has that like syrupy plum. And in fact, she said it smells just like this Japanese plum wine that she used to drink. And I used to drink a Japanese plum wine too many years ago, like in the early 2000s. I discovered Japanese plum wine eating at like sushi restaurants. And it does, that's what this smells like. But mine, as mine has, I've had mine for a little while now and Mine has like had time to sit and macerate and really deepen up. And so now that it's deepened up, it's, I don't know, it's warm and a little bit spicy smelling and it's gorgeous. It's intoxicating. It's really beautiful. You cannot beat the price of Genre Parfums perfumes either. This, a full bottle this size is like $25. Um, they're so amazing. They offer so many decant sizes too for such a good price. You can get, I think you can get five mil decants or three mil, maybe it's three mil decants for $4. 
and they're amazing. They're amazing perfumes, amazing quality. If you want to get an idea of what like an expensive perfume smells like before you actually invest in it, um, Genre has a ton of really good clones, so you can, and they're spot on clones. They make a clone of Nudiflorum from Nazimato. It's the first clone I've ever seen of that fragrance. And when I tell you it is 99.9% .9 exactly the same, it's spot on. I have both of them and I can tell you it is spot on. They make the best clones, maybe the best clones on the market. That's a bold statement to make, but honestly, I think they maybe make the best clones on the market. They're amazing. So anyways, that is Genre Parfums Plum Dumb. This next one, this perfume, I so wish that this, like, that I could get any K. Alley perfume to last on me. Unfortunately, they just don't. Um, I'm gonna buy the new Pistachio Yum one because I have to. It's a pistachio fragrance, but I'm not expecting a lot out of it. I'm expecting it to smell amazing, but to last all of an hour on me, this one is no different. This is Kaali Utopia Vanilla Coco. This perfume is an absolutely intoxicating, stunning coconut and white floral perfume. It is amazing. It's one of the best coconut and white florals that I've smelled, and I've smelled a ton. This one is so good though. This has like a toasty warmth to it. You almost get like a toasty nut kind of smell in the base of this one. It's a beautiful coconut. It's not too suntan lotion-y. It's really perfumey. It's beautiful. It lasts all of 10 minutes on me. And I hate that because it is absolutely intoxicating, especially for like a summer, coconut white floral perfume. I'm gonna try layering this over like just a plain coconut lotion. I've got the Bath & Body Works vanilla coconut lotion that is just like this really beautiful plain creamy coconut and I'm hoping that it will help this perfume last longer. I don't think it will. I just don't have luck with K. Alley fragrances. Even the invite only amber one that should be a beast. The notes in that fragrance, it's such a rich, strong fragrance. It Again, it lasts all of maybe an hour on me and it is so sad. Um, some people have the best luck with K. Alley. Some people, they just last forever on them. They perform so well. I am just not one of those people. It's It must be my skin chemistry just doesn't get along with them and just eats them. So. But yeah, this is an absolutely intoxicating fragrance. In fact, a lot of K. Alley fragrances are intoxicating. Um, I haven't smelled the Burning Cherry one yet. I've been really hesitant to buy any more because even if I love them, I just know that they're not gonna perform well for me and that I would probably never buy a full bottle. So I haven't been buying the new ones. I need to though, because I'm sure they're amazing. But anyways, yeah, this one in particular is super intoxicating and beautiful. Um, that is Kaali Utopia Vanilla Coco. Okay, next, both of my CJ scents that I have are very intoxicating for me. In fact, I've been wearing them recently because I know that I'm gonna, I'm about to have like five months of solid heat and I'm not gonna be able to wear these, which knowing me though, I'm gonna pull them out in the middle of the summer and wear them anyways because I am obsessed with these perfumes. Um, this is CJ Scents Boo. I also have Pumpkin Tobacco. Um, I have huge dents in mine. I just got these this past fall and I've got huge dents in both of them because I wear them all of the time because I love them. They're both kind of pumpkin pie, like pumpkin puree, like sweet spiced pumpkin puree and vanilla. And with my tobacco one, it's got a little bit of tobacco in it. They're amazing. They're amazing scents. They're super yummy, gourmand, edible. I just love them. You smell like a walking pumpkin cupcake and I'm just obsessed. And again, I've been wearing them so much lately, but they're both just incredibly intoxicating for me. And they are so long lasting. These are perfumes that you will spray them on one time and you will smell like them all day and you will still smell like them the next day until you wash them off. These are nuclear on me. They perform incredibly well. I love them. I just love them so much. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, I need to get back on the CJ Sense website and order some more because 
they're these are small little bottles i think this is only like a half ounce but they're so long lasting and they perform so well you really don't have to spray that much on so i love them i need to pick up some more from cj sense i think they're like 25 dollars for a little half ounce bottle which you know isn't the worst but Anyways, that one is called Boo. This next one, this is another old signature of mine, which probably has something to do with why I feel like it's super intoxicating, but I just think it's an intoxicating scent, and I think a lot of people will agree with me on this one. This is Christian Dior Hypnotic Poison. I adore this perfume. This is almond and caraway and jasmine and orange blossom and tonka bean and vanilla. It smells kind of like a, I don't know, I kind of get this really sweet Play-Doh-y vanilla and some warm florals in the background and I adore it. It smells so good on my skin. It's creamy and vanillic and warm and I love it and I've never really smelled anything else that smells exactly like, exactly like Hypnotic Poison except for other clones. Uh, well, that's not true. I've got, um, I've got Police Forbidden. I think that that's the name of it, Police Forbidden. It's the one in the disgusting looking handcuff bottle. It's similar to this. Um, it's really, re that one is very almondy though. It's much more almond heavy than this. So there are other fragrances on the market that smell somewhat like it, but I don't know. Usually they're just, they're trying to smell like it or they're clones. I've smelled a couple niche fragrances as well that smell like hypnotic poison. I think I've smelled something from Hilde Soliani that smelled like hypnotic poison. Um, yeah, so there are other fragrances on the market, but I don't know, nothing really compares to the real thing. Unfortunately, at this point, you've got to look for a pre-2012 bottle of this because the new formulation is trash. Unfortunately, Dior has butchered this one and the new formulation, the performance is terrible. It doesn't smell right. It still smells like hypnotic poison, but there's something about it that's not quite right. Um, it's There's something a little too sharp smelling in the new formulation. It doesn't have that beautiful, sweet, fluffy, kind of fuzziness that this formulation has. I don't know, I love it. It's an intoxicating fragrance and it's an amazing one. So anyways, that is Hypnotic Poison. And then last but not least, this is a newer one to my collection, but this fragrance to me is absolutely intoxicating. This is Cacharel Yes I Am. Um, I think I've smelled every single flanker of this. To me, the pillar is the best though of all of them. I love all the flankers, don't get me wrong. I love all but one of the flankers, but the pillar, in this situation is the best one. This is another one that is really sweet, almost candy-like sweet. It's floral. It's a little, just the slightest bit milky, and it's so good. And it seems like a, per a perfume that would smell like a million other fragrances on the market, but it really doesn't. It really is its own animal. It really does have, it, it really has its own uniqueness. Even being this really sweet, there's something almost soda-like about it. In fact, in my head, to me, this is like the Dr. Pepper of per, in the perf, of the perfume world. You could almost imagine like a hundred other sweet fragrances being put together and this is what the, and this is what the outcome is. That's kind of how I think about it. I don't know, I'm a weirdo, but that's kind of how I think about it. It reminds me of kind of like a Dr. Pepper of perfumes. <laughs> it's amazing though. It's incredibly long lasting. You can find this for such a good price at this point. Fragrance Net has it for I think under $20. Um, Nordstrom Rack has it as well as a lot of the flankers for under $20. And it's such an amazing perfume. I, I think if you are attracted to fragrances like this, oh my gosh, it's a must have for any collection. Um, for anybody that loves sweet fragrances or gourmand fragrances, I just feel like it's a must have for any perfume collection. It is amazing and it is so long lasting. I can spray this on one time and it will get me through an entire day. You're gonna get at least eight hours out of this one. I love it. It reminds me of Halloween because my beautiful subscriber friend that sent this to me, she sent it around Halloween. So it will always remind me of her and it will always remind me of Halloween because of that. 
and it is such a sweet candy lake fragrance. It's warm. It's always gonna remind me of Halloween. It's gonna be a Halloween perfume for me forevermore. And I am so excited because that is my most favorite time of the year ever is, is fall and right around Halloween. So anyways, that is Cacherelle, Yes I Am. And that is gonna be it guys. Those are a whole bunch more fragrances in my collection that I find to be incredibly intoxicating and that I absolutely love. I would love to hear your guys' intoxicating perfumes in the comments down below. Um, I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.